Recently, India enters the most crucial phase of unlocking process. Going back to work after lockdown can mean a lot of anxiety for employees as well as for employers. Workplace is changing as never before. Our topic today for discussions is back to workplace. We all know workplace is no more limited to home or to office. It can be any place which is safe and productive. We all are embracing a new reality, a new norm. Due to the recent devastating outcomes, many corporates have closed their physical offices for months. In fact, till mid 2021. Few others are gradually reopening their offices for employees with a lot of basic preparation. So many key factors to deliberate upon, to navigate the current situation, eventually to make our workplaces safe and healthy. But before we jump in, deep dive, like to take this opportunity to welcome and introduce our panelist. Our first panelist is Sanjeev Tulichari, currently Director of Facilities at Legato Health Technology. He is responsible for real estate and facility management. Earlier to Legato, for 14 years, he had been associated with Northern Trust as Senior Vice President, Workplace Services for APAC region. He has been driving the strategy and execution of Northern Trust growth phases in India as well as Manila. Build the first LEED certified office, Leadership in Energy and Environment Design in Bangalore way back in 2009. Pioneer in automating the transport management, conceptualized and rolled out the IoT platform which integrates space, energy, security, and employee interface. Served Indian Army for 14 years where his domain as a soldier being counterterrorism and mountain warfare. Amazing, very inspiring. Sanjeev is Masters in Corporate Real Estate from Cornet USA. Welcome Sanjeev to this webinar. Thanks Satish, thank you. And uh, good evening to all, to everyone who's on the webinar today. Our second panelist is Ritu Sharma. With a firm belief that in the future, there will be no female leaders, there will be just be leaders. Ritu is an ardent advocate of diversity and women inclusion in the workplace. She is focused on delivering effective, safe, compliant and sustainable services. Ritu leads the Boeing International Enterprise Service Organization for India and supports the company's global operations. An electrical engineer and management graduate by profession, Ritu has over 18 years of successful leadership in developing strategy and managing various facets of corporate real estate and workplace environment in organizations like Honeywell, GLL, and Sodexo. A superb change agent, Ritu's mantra for success is, great things never come from comfort zones. So motivating. Good to have you here, Ritu. Welcome to this webinar. Thank you, Satish. A very good afternoon to everybody on this webinar. I look, I'm looking forward to the conversations with Sanjeev and Dinesh. Our third panelist is Dinesh Malkhani, an industry veteran with 26 years of experience. He's the founder and CEO of Smartin Spaces. Smartin Spaces provide complete technology solutions, creating more intuitive and engaging spaces using technology. Prior to Smartin Spaces, Dinesh was the president of Cisco India and SAP. During his tenure, Cisco significantly grew to over a billion US dollar. Dinesh is currently a member of Forbes Technology Council, an exclusive platform for senior level technology executives, and a chair on the CII, National Committee on IT and ITES for the year 2021. Dinesh is the learning chair of YPO Bangalore chapter, a platform that enables networking with C-level executives and also being on the NASCOM executive. He has a Bachelor of Engineering degree in computers from Pune University and an MBA from SUNY Buffalo, America. Welcome Dinesh to this webinar. 
Hi, Satish, and thank you, everybody. And I hope to have an interesting conversation with Ritu and Sanjeev. Looking forward to it. Last but not the least, myself, Satish Sharma, heading sales and marketing for Featherlight, been in the industry for more than 20 years, a civil engineer graduate from Usmania University and an MBA marketing from FMS BHU. Before we go, few words for Featherlight. Featherlight Group is more than 50 years old. We are present in more than 60 locations in India and few international locations. We currently fit out averaging 5 million square feet a year. We manufacture average 40,000 chairs a month and 14,000 workstations a month. A very highly sustainable and socially responsible organization. We sincerely thank all our patrons for their continued support. Having said this, let me go straight to our panelists. My first question is to Sanjeev. Sanjeev, in the past, facility services often went unnoticed. But in today's world, things are very different. They are in the forefront because of the COVID. A lot of action is happening around. What are the changes you are anticipating, which are going to become a must for all organizations? Hi, Satish, thank you, Satish. You know, the FM team has been the backbone in managing the COVID response, right? And for most of us, the work actually started even much before the lockdown, yeah. right? And then that, uh, and that started in the form of getting the office, you know, sort of getting clean and ensure that there is not, uh, you know, you can keep the COVID out of the office and the spread of the virus. I think it started there and I think it really took off when, when the lockdown was announced and every everybody was struggling to make people uh, functional at home right so it, from terms of ship from in terms of shipping equipment communication gadgets and all of that right so i think yeah, the, the, the the fm vertical ad search i think had a, had its plate full now as we look forward you know and i think the focus right now is on what we call the RTO, return to office. And I would put that whole RTO into two contexts, pre-vaccine and post-vaccine context. I think the pre-vaccine uh, pre will be driven primarily by safety of employees, and that is first and foremost, right? And I think as organization, we will do everything that matters. So it could start from the you know modification, the cars that we send to pick up our employees to our to our safety in the elevators, to food, social distance in the office, you know, uh, additional filters in the HU room, so that the quality of the air that comes in, right? So it, and in short, also comply with every direction that the the central and state government is issued. I think all of us who are there have got a long list of things to be done as part of, I think whatever you do is less. Um, because I think primarily a lot of people have this uh, have this fear in them that uh, uh, I, I go into the office and I, I will get, and there are enough cases around the, uh, in, the, in, in the market where people have come to offices and have been infected. So I think that's the big one for us to see take whatever I've listed and more to make people comfortable to come back to work. I think the second one is would I would be the post vaccine, you know, and which, which will, which in my view will determine the new novel, right? Uh, and uh, so I think uh, companies are determined uh, to take the learnings and I think there will be a new working model. Uh, what that would be will be driven by the industry, uh, by the industry and, the, and what business you do. Uh, there is no fixed solution. What works for a furniture manufacturer may not work for a GIC in a banking world or in an engineering product company like what, what uh, Ritu represents. So all of us will have very different, but I think uh, what I would see is seeing of, uh, we will see perhaps more agile working coming in. We will see increase in personal spaces. We would see, uh, you know, work based out of space-based work, right? And public, what you call it, activity-based work. 
uh, I would see the permanent desk coming down. But for people who need to be there for, you know, somebody has a, a PC which has a very specific configuration. Very spe so those, those exceptions will be there. Uh, uh, but you will see more agile. And I think we'll also see a good percentage of people working from home uh, for, a, for an extended period of time. I mean, I, I would say, say uh, depending on companies, some companies may have 10% working from home, come, some may have more. I think that percentage, again, will be driven by the business that the company is uh, and, uh, and uh, how comfortable they are, right? You know, the data sure. protection, uh, you know, your client's data. And so there are, you know, uh, the data privacy issue, all that will get kicked in, but they will be. And it will be, uh, and it will be driven by uh, the, the business that the company does, and each individual company what they do, right? And also, this would also would potentially long term basis uh, would also see some of the companies able to reduce their real estate footprint, but not not nothing uh, in the immediate future. But as they uh, you know put in all this uh, post vaccine measures, and I think one of the outcome of that which you could potentially see in the next three to five years, companies having a smaller uh, footprint. So the Wonderful. Thanks. Thanks, Sanjeev. I think the way you could actually look beyond in terms of couple of months and years and coming out with two phases has been really good insight for the audience in terms of looking at it. Let me just go to Ritu. Uh, Ritu, the question is humans, right? They are actually social beings. Always employers thought of designing places wherein they can come together, converge, more collaborative, more ideas can come through. But today's environment doesn't support that. What does it mean in terms of physical workplaces? How are they going to be together while maintaining the physical distancing concept? Hey, thanks, Satish. And, uh, you know, I'm just trying to connect the dots with what uh, Sanjeev was saying. And he touched briefly on the whole uh, paradigm shift around the workplace solutions and strategies that organizations have uh, you know, embraced. So if we look back in time, Satish, if you see workplace strategy for organizations uh, took a lot of time to evolve uh, from a traditional L-shaped one is to one desking solution to companies which are talking to, which were talking pre-COVID, I would say, about adopting agile environments, activity-based paradigms uh, into their workplace. Now, when I look at this whole pandemic at this point in time, I think it has become a very powerful catalyst for workplace change. And, you know, as you mentioned, I, I'm a very ardent advocate of change. I think change is the only constant that we all experience in our life. So the sudden shift in terms of what the pandemic has brought us to is raising a lot of questions around sustainability on the new ways of working. And the questions I think we need to ask ourselves is about workplace productivity, the role and purpose of what a physical space is going to bring in the future. And is physical office really an anchor for employees to come together, to collaborate, innovate, to really come through with breakthrough innovations? So to your point, when you say that, you know, human beings are social, uh, the social beings, I believe that, you know, putting human performance at the core of any real estate and workplace strategy is going to be very important and essential for companies to thrive and flourish. If you see, humankind has always triumphed over adversity and COVID-19 too will be overcome with a vaccine. So like you know, Sanjeev was saying, there is a pre-vaccine and now there's going to be a post-vaccine uh, arena. So if I look at it, I don't think we should get into you know, short-term knee-jerk reactions. All organizations are focusing on putting an RTO plan. We are trying to see without compromising on people's safety, how to bring people back into the office. And I think that's what is the need of the hour. However, for tomorrow, I think we need to start defining what that perfect mix is going to be. And will that perfect mix foster collaboration, productivity, or bring out human experience for talent? Because at the end of the day, Workplace is about congregating talent and trying to do those big things that an organization is dreaming from an overall vision, uh, vision and uh, mission perspective, right? So I think uh, there is lots to, 
there is lots which is currently work in progress. And, uh, you know, some of the thoughts that cross my mind is, one, that no size will fit all. Uh, like Sanjeev was mentioning, culture of the company, what are the trends within the industry where the company is operating? What kind of talent profiles and expectations those talent profiles will have? Um, all of them will, will matter in terms of whether the work can be performed remotely or uh, technology tools can be used to empower those employees or we need to look at bringing them back to office, uh, you know, 100%. I think this is still emerging and there will be new modes of working that is going to come into play. Uh, do we have an answer at this point in time? I think at least from my perspective, uh, whatever I have spoken to my peers, colleagues, or to some of the decision makers in various organizations, I think various companies are still figuring out. And that's why I say that no one size will fit it all. The second aspect I think is going to be a very hybrid model and choice, right? So which means there is going to be a very classic mix of the elements of home offices, co-working places, satellite offices. I think the spaces are going to be very distributed and liquid. And that's going to emerge a new model, uh, which probably we will call it the hybrid model. And uh, hopefully, uh, towards the end of this journey, we will have a little more creative nomenclature for this hybrid model. Um, I think last but not the least, something very interesting I thought I wanted to share is about um, elastic workplaces. And this is something that I have been thinking about, uh, looking at the hybrid model. An elastic workplace, but at the same time, a single community. Uh, maybe I'll talk a little bit about the single community in the subsequent questions, but um, you know, just think about it. Uh, when you have a long distance marriage, you know, you have an elastic Mangal Sutra because in, in the Indian context, the Mangal Sutra is very important. And, you know, you have an elastic Mangal Sutra. Somehow the couple, you know, try to survive the long distance marriages as well. So just like that, I think our workplaces will also become very elastic in nature. Okay. Um, workplaces elasticity must be designed uh, to ensure there is a sense of connection and belonging, just like the marriage. But a single community to ensure that while staff is working remotely or the staff is working on site that sense of belongingness is not compromised at any point in time so there is a lot of hard work i'm sure we workplace leaders or i would say the corporate real estate the facilities management organizations they will play a very pivotal role in order to make sure that this long distance marriage between the remote worker, the on-site worker, and the overall vision and mission of the organization, it survives through that elastic workplace, right? And I think, uh, you know, uh, just to sum it up, I think, um, you know, one should not solely deal with the implications of uh, social distancing, which is what we are talking about. That's the new buzzword. Though a gaz ki duri, that's what the government says, stay six feet apart. I think we need to seize the opportunity to reinvent our workplace in order to make sure it is still fostering collaboration without compromising social distancing. Also, at the same time, looking at the productivity and creating a better human experience. I think that's what is going to define the future for us. Thank you. Thank you, Ritu. I think the audience would be loving the way the reference you have actually related to it. Very nice. Good for those insights. Just for the audience, you have the leaders here you have any questions specific things to ask please use our question and answer session please send your questions at the fag end of the session we are going to address those i think the way we are moving around uh, my next question actually goes to dinesh depending upon industry and companies there is a footfall of 10 to 50 percent of the employees returning to work in the present scenario let our audience understand how technology can support the desk management allocation or the seating allocation in the present scenario, which eventually saves the space cost. And how about the meeting rooms? How well we can actually utilize in present situation because physical distancing is an important criteria. Over to Dinesh. So thanks and thanks Ritu and Sanjeev. I think you all make some terrific points, right? At the end of the day, 
whether it's 1% coming back or 50% coming back, I think the first principle is no stones unturned, right? Whether it's one employee or it's a, a thousand, I think the principles around safety and making sure you have your protocols in place have to be completely applied, right? And to be honest with you, our belief is that technology plays a huge part in being able to enable that, right? Uh, you know, you have right from entry all the way up to, I mean, an employee waking up and saying, well, do I go to work today or I don't go to work? And if I, ha if I, if I need to go, uh, am I fit to go? You know, am I, am I in a red zone? And so there are all these checks and balances that need to be put in place. And so finally you show up to work and you don't know who else is coming to work, right? And the first thing is now, because you have to have seats that are two meters apart, you have to have that information, right? Otherwise you'd show up and at the same time, you know, a thousand other people show up and the next thing you know, there's overcrowding that is happening. That's why having intelligent technology is huge, right? It's the only way that you'll be able to uh, maintain the, the social distance requirements and, and other, other things that are actually being set up, right? So one of the things we observed was uh, every seat, by the way, in an office is surrounded by eight other seats, right? And just imagine the nightmare of having to take a tape and measure one seat against eight and then be able to figure out how many seats are really left. And then how do you communicate with the employees? I think it's a problem that technology was built to solve, right? And today what is happening is that, you know, if you have a floor plan, you take the floor plan, it'll, the software will tell you, what is the most optimized workplace going to look like so that when an employee comes in, they know that, you know what, it's been taken care of. I feel safer coming back to work. And by the way, I'm sitting here. So I go and select this seat. Has somebody else used it? Like, I don't want to sit somewhere which has already been used, right? But how do you know that? You can't be policing it. You can't have people, you know, guards standing there and determining that, right? Uh, so you have to use technology to be able to do that. And that's what desk management does, right? It gives you the ability to plan. It gives you the ability to know what can be used. It gives you the ability to then choose, you know, which employee sits where, and then they can make their own choices. And then they determine that they can come to work. If you can get that flow right as an organization using technology, I think you've solved a huge problem. Because remember, when you walk into a mall, right, you come into interaction with another person, maybe for 30 seconds. So it's okay. But when you're in an office, you're sitting next to that person for the whole day, eight hours, right? So you better know that person is fit and you better know that that person is two meters apart, right? So the dynamics and the stakes at play are very high, right? And so obviously that's the problem that test management solves. The second thing is, sure enough, you know, I need to book a meeting room. By the way, our belief is meeting rooms will move into collaboration spaces. So there'll be open areas that you just block. And why do you block it? Why do you book it? You want to book it because after it's booked, after you've used it, somebody's got to go clean it up, right? You have to have that yeah. much protocol in place. Now you can't again have people constantly cleaning these things up when they're not being used. And when employees get to choose them, they better know that, you know, that this is an area that I can use. So that's where the whole collab sort of areas, meeting room and management of that comes into play. But my belief is that, you know, if you solve some of these things using technology, one is you make it much safer for your employees. It's great to take somebody's temperature, but it's very different when you have somebody sitting eight hours next to you, right? So you factor that first before you solve the other easier problems, right? Like taking temperature and saying, oh, now I've solved the problem, right? And then the third thing is it's got a huge impact on cost, huge impact on cost. Our belief is that with work from home being a reality and you know call it any way you want but the reality is that work from home is absolutely going to be adopted by a majority of companies yeah there'll be the hardware manufacturers and others who don't have a choice right there'll be security regulation but i think in general but if that's going to happen then how do you blend between who works from home who comes to work how is seating going to be managed how meeting rooms going to be managed how is parking going to be allocated the new workspace of the future and even of today, right? Whether it's before vaccine or after vaccine has to factor in safety, but it has to be highly flexible, right? It's an area you come in to collaborate, but when you come in, you, you have to have a flexible seat available. You've got to have flexible bookings done. You have to have flexible car parking done. So technology has a huge role to play. Um, and I think it ties very well in what Ritu mentioned about the need for collaboration. 
what Sanjeev mentioned around safety and security and the whole protocol around back to work being absolutely critical, uh, essentially for, you know, companies. Wonderful. Thanks. Thanks, Dinesh, for those insights. Satish, I just wanted to add what Dinesh was saying. Sure. My very personal opinion. I think, you know, the whole flexibility piece that we're talking about, in my mind, when I look at it from a hygiene and safety standpoint, which is one of the top concerns of uh, the consumer, in this case, the employees who occupy these workspaces, I think with flexibility, your hygiene and your safety levels will be far more higher because to what Dinesh was saying, technology is going to enable it and make sure that every time a space is being used, and if it's, say, for example, a social space or even for that matter, a desk, you know, there is some way to make sure that it is getting cleaned for the next user to come in and occupy. The whole standard of safety and hygiene with flexibility is going to go to a completely new dimension and to a different level altogether going forward. Absolutely. Perfect. Thanks, thanks, Ritu, for those insights. I would like to move to Sanjeev. Uh, wanted to just get those facility expertise. I mean audience who are listening to us, they are curious how the visitor area, how the reception area, how the common areas, the employers, the infrastructure are going to actually design in this particular phase of life. So what changes, Sanjeev, you feel can make employees more comfortable? Uh, how do you want to actually talk around from the facilities point of view on these areas, Sanjeev? Uh, you know, you know, Satish. I think things, as I said, things will change, right? I think you know, taking the whole uh, safety first parameter in mind, what you're going to see is all these areas get becoming more touchless, literally. And and I would say, you know, that my favorite pre-vaccine and post-vaccine, I was, I sort of did want to divide everything because some of the things that we do are are very tactical because that basically. Uh, safety uh, feature, right? And those will go away post uh, the vaccine. And I think, you know, in a pre-vaccine environment, I, I don't see companies get allowing too many visitors into the offices and all of that. I think that would remain uh, restricted. I think you would see a, a larger user of the common areas, which in the, within the, in the facility, I've, I would uh, call it the collaboration area. And that is where what Dinesh was mentioning using technology because at the end of the day why do people come into the office I think you know there's this famous quote uh, it's not mine it's somebody else who says don't commute to compute right mm -hmm. right and that's sort of going to become sort of a mantra in the days to come right a lot of people want a uh, a lot of large companies, uh, I thought taking name, who for years had said work from home, work from home, started getting people back. And the reason they got people back, what they wanted, they felt that you collaborate very effectively in a meeting room with a whiteboard in front, you put an idea up on that and then, and then thrash the idea, right? Uh, so you will see most of collaborative work getting to you, then maybe people will use technology uh, to use those, you know, book those collaboration space so that all the, uh, once people leave, it gets clean and ready for the next people to use. So I, so I would see uh, the collaboration spaces getting uh, more tech savvy than just being uh, soft seating. I think it'll get, so they'll raise the bar put in some technology in it to, to make people more effective, uh, make that collaboration even more productive. I think that you would see. Uh, uh, I think that's one big change that you will see uh, in the collaboration area uh, in the days to come where uh, more, more, uh, more technology and usages by, you know, by blocking it by appointment. Yeah, and of course, uh, uh, a more highly focused cleaning regime for all the common areas. Uh, I think that I would say is natural where people head long term. On a short term wise, I don't think, you know, anybody wants any visitors <laughs> in the office. <laughs> Satish. True, true. Thanks, thanks, uh, Sanjeev. Um, my next question is to uh, Dinesh. Uh, Dinesh, real estate is the second largest cost that sits on the balance sheet. What do you think 
would be the major decisions in near future, especially for the companies who had large offices, beautiful campuses, asking employees to be in, to become most effective, productive, and get aligned to the objectives of the company. Uh, what do you have to say on this? How are things going to change? So honestly, I got to be a little careful what I say here, right? But um, <laughs> I think one thing is for sure, and there are two schools of thought, right? So I read one report recently that said, because of social distancing, half your seats are gone, so you have to double your space. And I was like, okay, well, that's one way to look at it. And the other school of thought is that, look, um, with the work from home experiment being such a great success, why do more than 50 or 60% of my workforce ever need to return back? Can I create an environment where, you know, okay, two weeks, uh, this team comes in and the next two weeks, another team comes in, right? And can I do that? One thing is for sure, uh, whether or not they cut cost on current space, but taking new space, is I would say for most companies not going to happen, at least for some time, right? I mean, they will yep. want to optimize what they have. They'll want to have practices in place so that, you know, they manage the social distancing regime that has been set out. But at the same time, you know, they give the flexibility to the employee to say, okay, and to the managers, right? Like the whole rostering that, all right, you know, two weeks, this team comes in and then because not showing up to office is also not very healthy in the long term. Right. I think you'd sure. agree that, you know, and I'll tell you what will happen, right. When promotions have to be decided, it'll always be the team that was sitting out there that you knew was working very hard. You know, it's natural tendency. You'll say, yeah, you know, an awesome job. And I know them and we have coffee together every now and then. And that's when the challenges start to creep in. So you have to balance this. Uh, we feel that with technology and with the right seat plans and putting all this in place, there's definitely an opportunity to cut 25 to 30% off real estate cost. Um, and cost means everything from rental to, you know, FM services to electricity to everything put together. If you balanced it out really well, I mean, we are now, God, we're doing 30 cities around the world. Right, we have, yep. we have 30 cities around 30 major cities around the world, all the way from South America, Brazil to you know, Shanghai, and China, and Japan. And one common theme is every one of my clients is saying, We want to reduce costs to start with, with about 20%, and then we want you to work your way upwards. So please get very creative in trying to figure <laughs> that out. Hey, with GDP, the way it's going down, and with businesses, of course, PL is a real conversation today. And, and why not leverage on this and, you know, bring it together. The cost of technology is insignificant compared to the real saving that you can have. I mean, one desk, one desk, and Sanjeev, you would know this in Ritu, mm. in India cost, not the physical table, so don't worry, Satish. It's the whole <laughs> thing together, cost about six lakh rupees a year. And if you even took hundred of them out, right, you're looking at 60 lakh rupees of saving just in one little space, right? So the opportunity is huge to be able to do that. Thanks, thanks, uh, Dinesh. Just one minute, I want to Satish, Sanjeev. Mr. Satish, I mean, if you could just permit me to comment on, you know, what Dinesh said, no. and I think he's got his spot on. You know, what this crisis has done, Satish, is made every business to visit its working model, you know, its business model. This is how we work, right? And and it suddenly changed. I'll give you an example. And you know, in my previous organization, there were teams which worked from home, which had 30% from a resiliency perspective. There were some teams which were never allowed to work from home because of data privacy. So this as because of this, that whole team were all allowed to work. So what I'm going, what what's going to happen is every business is looking at the data. Now it's five months working from home. Right? Somebody just told me three days back that it is five months in India since we start all working from home. So what this five months have done is given enough data to people, what's happening, what's working, what's not working, and what we need to do, right? And I think, you know, driven by data privacy, data protection, keeping all that in mind, and the requirement to collaborate, people will come up with a new working model. And I think that working model, and the biggest one in that would be, uh, an outcome of that would be reduction in real estate cost. Wonderful, wonderful. Thanks, and, thanks, Sanjeev. Ritu, you wanted to share? Yeah. I also wanted to just quickly add, especially on the real estate piece, uh, 
I was, uh, I uh, completely agree with Sanjeev. I think a lot of it is, uh, you know, um, data is already available. Five months is a good long period for people to figure out things in organizations, to figure out what works for them, what doesn't work for them. I think most of the organizations are in processes of, uh, you know, looking at that data and defining how, what should the future look like. But on the real estate piece, you know, talking about uh, campus versus distributed offices. So I think the hub and spoke model that we, you know, constantly talk about, and it's not new because remember every organization is just not bringing employees to workplace. There are customers with whom you interact. Uh, there are suppliers with whom you interact in the office. So it's not just limited to a team of technologists coming and doing some breakthrough innovation. There are experience True. centers, innovation areas. There are so many um, laboratories, data centers. There is so much of critical infrastructure in some of these real estate uh, you know, spaces that we occupy that you know, office is not going to disappear. It's still going to be there. But I think the trend in which we're going to come, interact and engage in that office, you know, that is going to change. The quantum in which we are going to come and collaborate in the office, that is going to change. And that's what we are describing as we speak, uh, especially I think most of the organizations are probably scratching their heads at this point in time, trying to figure that out. Wonderful. Thanks. Thanks, Ritu. I think our audience would be really enjoying the session with so much variety in terms of the thoughts. And uh, just a heads up for the audience, please post your questions uh, on the chat, which is available so that we can take it up at the closing session for this particular webinar. The next segment, this particular webinar wanted to touch was the important aspect, health, behavior changes, the protocols. So those are the things which we would like to touch upon because these are very important. We all know health is wealth. Uh, so I think uh, the way things are going around, uh, Ritu, this question goes to you where we wanted to hear, well-being of an employee is very important. However, the definition of well-being has undergone a huge change. On the other hand, stress levels are increasing exponentially going high. What are your thoughts on how organizations address these prevailing challenges in this tough phase of life? Thanks uh, for that question, Sanjeev. So, you know, I will again probably um, look a little bit around the pre-COVID times. And if you actually look at the pre-COVID times, uh, social interactions in my definition, you know, uh, were like those mini espresso shots that you would get, uh, you know, to stimulate your body and mind through the day. So think about it when an employee uh, gets out of home and is uh, traveling to uh, office, uh, you know, uh, he is probably interacting with the co-passengers in an office cab, maybe chatting up with the, you know, the carpooling friends. You would have uh, built some metro buddies when you are traveling in the train. And all of these interactions for that period of anywhere between 45 minutes to an hour and a half, it is actually helping that employee to get connected back to the real world, right? So it's like that mini espresso shot that really gives you the stimulus to get geared up for the day. Finally, when you arrive at office, what's happening? You know, you in India, we have a very cultural, you know, tea is like, a, uh, I would say the, um, uh, it's probably the uh, country beverage or the national beverage because uh, you know, chai pe charcha or the chai times are a very uh, interesting way to come together, bond with your friends, colleagues, talk a little bit about uh, things which are not related to business, but maybe to politics and, you know, uh, and wellness. Um, people also go for nicotine breaks, at least in the business parks that we are present. I see a lot of people after meal times taking their nicotine breaks. Um, and then, you know, um, also a very big I would say a culture about, you know, taking these short walks after you had a meal in the business parks or the campuses that you're present. I think these are all examples of those little mini social espresso shots that uh, keep people going. And that's an example of, uh, you know, probably the social interactions that we're all, uh, you know, looking forward to uh, from a Monday to Friday when we come to the workplace. When I look at today, which is probably the, uh, the current COVID times, uh, to a large extent, uh, you know, these espresso shots are really limited or missing, right? And when I look at it, uh, just from my perspective, uh, human beings are social interactions. And they are, their DNA is all about, 
you know, being a social being. That cannot change. It's in our DNA. So, um, so are we saying that the wellness, the social wellness is uh, not important? I think it calls for a lot, a lot of focus. Um, when I look at well-being, uh, to your original question, I would say well-being is, you know, all about being happy, um, you know, socially, uh, being connected, uh, being healthful, uh, having some purpose in life for which you're constantly uh, working towards. I think all of this finally relates to taking care of your mind, your body, and soul. So, uh, and wellness is not just about saying that, you know, um, I don't have any ailment, so I'm healthy. No, I think it's not just physical well-being. It's also the mental well-being that becomes very important. So, um, uh, certainly needs a discussion. I won't talk a lot about physical wellness. Social media during the COVID times has done wonders because a lot of people, and I'm sure the audience is well aware of what does physical well-being uh, mean to people today. Um, I know of cycling clubs, trekking clubs. I know of people who are following the uh, Leslie's of the world, doing the three-mile walk at home. Uh, you know, the cult fit has become a very big, um, I would say, a very big, uh, you know, uh, fit in the minds of uh, people who are probably locked down in their homes, trying to make sure that they are uh, physically fit. And a lot of physical fitness impacts your mental fitness as well. But what I would like to touch upon is what's happening in the, in, you know, truly in the organizations when I look at the other aspects of well-being and wellness. I think companies are a lot focusing on the mental and emotional well-being. Um, you know, very important because we are all remotely working. Uh, we don't get to meet our colleagues very often to save your bandwidth uh, in terms of your internet connection. Sometimes you're on camera, sometimes you're off camera. Uh, so, you know, with all of those challenges, I think organizations are really focusing through their employee assistance programs to make sure that, uh, you know, people have a purpose. Uh, they are feeling, continued to be feeling valued and heard through the various virtual interactions that they're doing. Um, Incidentally, I think um, a study says that 80% of the working population in India today lives out of a monthly paycheck. And uh, taking trends from that, many organizations have started partnering with agnostic companies like FinServ or TrueWorth, actually helping people build their financial wellness. So what these companies actually do are they are educating people, uh, providing them unbiased information of how to maintain uh, financial health. And they also have some very interesting tools, technology tools on which uh, an individual can go and do a quick health assessment to see how do their personal balance sheets look like. So these are some of the interesting trends, I would say, which have emerged in these COVID times where organizations are not just talking about a beautiful gymnasium infrastructure where people can do yoga and focus on physical wellness. But I think the emotional, mental, and the financial wellness are the next big things, uh, you know, which are going to emerge for organizations to uh, look at and help and support the needs of their employees. Thank you. Thank you, Ritu. I think that was wonderful. Now, for the audience, we wanted to check with the leaders here, the speakers here, last six months. What is that one well-being habit which we have picked individually? where our audience can actually take a clue from the habit. Let me start with Dinesh. Dinesh, one well-being habit from your side in the last six months? Well, I must admit that, you know, I used to go to the gym previously, and then I decided that obviously the gym is closed. Uh, so I do yoga in the morning every day, religiously, one hour. And I got to tell you, it's just fantastic, right? And actually, Wonderful. the only thing taking me off the gym because here in Singapore, the gyms have opened. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it's been an awesome habit I picked up and I just love it. Wonderful. Sanjeev, how about you? I think I've just become regular with my exercise, right? So <laughs> I think now that I don't have to drive, uh, uh, you know, 60 to 90 minutes to get to work, I have put that on. So my initially, even if I, when I exercise, it used to be 25 to 30 minutes. Now I get for myself 60 to 90 minutes every day. So, yeah, I think it's my overall health. I have lost a few kilos. <laughs> what? Wonderful. How about Ritu? What you would like to share to the audience? 
I, I know I'm on a public forum right now, but you know, for me, it's been the opposite of what Sanjeev is saying. Some <laughs> better when there is a lot of pressure on my head. So that uh, 16 minutes of travel time that I've saved, probably I'm getting a little bit more sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, but I think uh, from my perspective, I think um, I've done, I've started getting onto a lot of reading that uh, had completely stopped because of long working hours and, you know, uh, weekends being totally uh, used into uh, home related uh, work. But uh, I think I've um, started picking up and getting back to my reading habit. Uh, and uh, I think that's, uh, that's been uh, very um, intriguing and I would say, um, you know, rejuvenating for my mind. Uh, which I had before the uh, COVID hit us. Wonderful, wonderful. I think I think the audience who are there, we're really feeling good to see what the leaders have actually utilized the time and then they can actually, you know, align to their working habits and then get the best out of it. So we have 10 minutes for the question and answers. So here, I know before I go to question and answers, I just wanted to give one minute to Ritu just to share the behavior changes, the challenges among the employees, right? We haven't seen this kind of an era earlier. This is something as a challenge which has come up. In terms of cutting across the employees who are in thousands, 5,000, 10,000, with regard to the behavior, with regard to the good practices, what is that few things are really good to inculcate, bring them to the new paradigm shift, what you have been actually taking. I'm just giving you a minute, Ritu, on this, just to understand because it's a very important topic. Yeah, so I think, like I was saying, uh, you know, change is the only constant. I have two things to share. I have a personal habit, you know, I would like people to follow the rule of eight. And uh, it simply means divide your 24 hours into three parts. Uh, you know, give eight hours of uh, time to your work and uh, do it very with a very discipline and diligently. Uh, don't get distracted because you are sitting at home. Eight hours of time, uh, you know, in terms of making sure you get the right amount of rest. Uh, so sleep well. And eight, eight hours of time with your family, uh, you know, spending on wellness and your physical and emotional well-being. I think that's from a personal habit I would say people should uh, focus on. I think on the, uh, on the professional side, uh, Satish, um, some of the things that I've been personally experiencing and uh, I would say in Boeing, we do it very well. Um, you know, when you are sitting in a virtual environment and doing these long uh, meetings where you are virtually getting connected, um, you know, your eyes are strained, you're looking at the monitor constantly. So I think um, yep. good habits is, you know, to make sure that if you have a meeting which is beyond an hour, uh, give that 10 minute of a, you know, a, a tea break or maybe a quick bio break for people on the call. Uh, let them stretch their legs, let them take a whiff of fresh air. Uh, because I think that works very well. That makes sure that for long meetings, the engagement, the participation, and the concentrations are retained uh, throughout the duration of the meeting. So this Thank is you. what I share with the audience. Thank you. I think we are into question and uh, answer session. And uh, the response have been really good from the audience, very active. Thank you so much. Series of questions, but we may not be able to touch all. But I would like to take my first question to Dinesh. One question that comes from the audience, Dinesh. Uh, audience is enjoying the insights. From technology aspect, do we have a technology in place for maintaining distance between seats in office? So look, there's a lot of work that we have done in that area, Satish. Uh, so what we do is, and now we're doing this across, you know, millions of square feet, right, of office space. So we take their floor plans and, uh, you know, our software basically automatically calculates what's the distance between every chair. And then basis of that, we've got algorithms that run and tell you that for maximum space that you can have and be socially distant, here are all the seats that can be used. So if you think of it doing it manually, you'll have to take a tape with every chair and then do it that way and you land up with a very suboptimal result, right? I mean, we have customers that we're doing this across 175 locations around the world and you can imagine the cost and the time it would have taken it to do manually. And I'll tell you another thing, today uh, India is saying do foot, uh, do meter ki duri, right? So that's two, 
Here it's six feet in Singapore. And so it'll keep changing and evolving, right? But imagine if the rule changes, you'll have to do that all over again. And so that's why the technology was built. It takes you a couple of days and you're done across all your offices. But yeah, text right there and it's all ready to, uh, it's being used and deployed by companies that are moving very fast around it. But the good part is whatever you, whatever after that, the floor plan you come up with, our suggestion is on the mobile phone, an employee should be able to see all the seats that are available. When they come to work or before they come to work, they should book a seat. So you book a seat and you then have your seat booked. You show up to work, you check in, you use the space. Nobody else can use the space. So from a safety point of view, it's like a one-to-one -one for that time. And then they check out. When they leave, the seat gets clean. Very smooth, effective flow, maintaining social distancing, but also ensuring that you know, seats are being flexibly offered to employees in a very safe manner. And of course, a huge impact on cost. Yeah, you don't need to have uh, so many seats at, at the end of it. Yeah. So. Wonderful. Thanks. Thanks, Dinesh, because very pertinent question asked by the audience, because that's a slight anxiety, fear among the employees when they are going back. And if technology can support them, where to actually take the help of the app and book it, I think it's amazing. Next question goes to Bhavin. Sorry, Bhavin has actually sent a question. Uh, he has addressed this to Sanjeev. Sanjeev, the question is, once employees return to office fully with agile policies in place, in your view, how many percentage continue to work from home? Do you anticipate what kind of percentage and uh, what is that tech companies are forecasting? So this is the question uh, which has come in the box. Satish, I actually just responded to <laughs> on the message chat, okay. but I'll talk about it. Right? Uh, uh, Satish, it's very difficult to put a number. I think yeah. the number will be driven by the business model of that company and what they do. Right? Uh, and uh, if I were to take some examples, for example, we have had the, the COO of TCS saying, One week, over the next five years, I'm going to have 75% people work from home. Okay, hmm. I was I can't take name, but I was talking to a uh, somebody in a company which is in R and D, right? And they and they really do uh, some real niche work. They they're, they're designing products which may potentially be in the market in five years from now. And he said we don't want anybody working from home. He said this is all uh, I, you know. This is, he said this is is what we do. We don't think we are comfortable doing that. So I think each company. Will uh, and will will arrive at arrive at his own percentage. It could be as low as five. It could be as as seventy five. And I think it and it will be purely driven by the company's business model. What they you know what they will arrive at after looking at what they've done in the last five months and you know points that they will look at it. it, it you know they will look at the you know the data protection the privacy issue and all of that and they will arrive so i think there is no uh, there can be no percentage but it could be as low as five and as high as 75 maybe even more right so it will be driven by the business model of that particular company satish well well said sanjeev i think i think each industry each companies are very different so the employees who are into different generations, they are spread differently. So each company will come out with a specific solution as we are fighting against the present situation. And then eventually we actually overcome the present situation. I think you have rightly said that there is no single solution for this kind of a challenge. Uh, the next question from the audience is to Ritu. Uh, Ritu, the question is, any tips to have flexible and agile workplace what elements do we consider in today's uncertain times to have more collaborative spaces and not much of desk around? So, um, okay, I'm not too sure when we talk about tips, what does that mean? But, uh, you know, we touched upon it over the course of this time, of this conversation. Uh, traditional meeting rooms, I'm not saying that they will disappear. A lot of the desking area where we used to look at one is to one desking, depending on the strategy that works to what Sanjeev was saying, what is the percentage of people who can be totally remote workers? What is the percentage of people who are hybrid workers and hybrid workers do need to come once a week, twice a week, three times a week, while organizations figure that out. I'm very certain that some of that 
desking space will get repurposed for social hubs. In fact, today morning I was thinking about it. I mean, just think about you know these uh, pillars in our workspace, and you know you have these uh, interesting uh, interactive panel boards on four sides of the pillar. And while maintaining social distancing, while maintaining your uh, you know uh, stay away from each other, you are still able to real time collaborate and come out the you know breakthrough ideas, right? Because you're ideating and annotating real time on that wall through the form of a interactive uh, screen so i think the some of these designs uh, will emerge eventually because you don't want to compromise on the physical distancing part of it and you don't want you want to make sure that people are wearing masks when they are uh, you know in a little place where they are congregating so uh, coming back to the question uh, what are the tips to make sure i think data very important you need to go back to your organization look back at what works for you what are the types of personas are existing what is that mix look like and i think then take that uh, take that data into a, a modeling where you define how many of it should be your personal spaces how many of it should be your uh, you know collaborative spaces and a lot of the ownership will fall back to furniture suppliers like um, you know like the likes of featherlight sanjeev where uh, you know uh, it's not going to be looking like any more of those fancy sofas or you know those poofs that we talk about the definition of collaborative furniture is going to emerge uh, with something very different you know the pods will look different you will have to look at acoustic in these pods because the moment the floor becomes open and you have more of these social hubs you don't want noise to become a disturbing element right so a lot of the ownership lies back with furniture manufacturers like yours uh, to make sure that you're able to get all that data and information from your customers and develop those uh, you know beautiful social hub solutions uh, which could work for the uh, for the occupiers wonderful well said thanks for those insights ritu i think audience have put across many questions but because of the time we may not be able to take all on this webinar but what our team which is behind the screen we will actually make a note of it and we will go back to the audience in terms of wherever we are able to support and get in touch with you all to get the right insights ah uh, wow this had been an amazing and invigorating discussions last few months all were forced to rethink very differently journey forward for all of us is to embrace unpredictable future come out with innovative solutions go on to those new habits the healthy the good ones go resilient with the right products and solutions we all are aware no one size fits for all and with this note i would like to thank all panelists sanjeev ritu and dinesh and the audience for making this session so engrossing we hope you all enjoyed it the way we enjoyed hosting for you all stay safe take good care thank you bye bye Thanks. Thank you everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.